Hey, this is Dave from Medic Test Secrets, and here I have the uh, Paramedic Static and Dynamic Cardiology Rhythm Review. So here's a list of the ACLS rhythms that are used in static and dynamic cardiology. Um, as you can see, we have cardiac arrest rhythms, we have bradycardia rhythms, and tachycardia rhythms. So today I want to go over um, the cardiac arrest rhythms. Um, as an addition to this list, we're also going to go over polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, uh, pulse obviously um, because that that is also a rhythm that you can see so number one we have ventricular tachycardia so ventricular tachycardia um, again if we're talking pulseless ventricular tachycardia um, is a lethal dysrhythmia um, so pulse will be no pulse the site of origin is one or more ventricular sites uh, there's usually no P wave present and the P to R interval is not measurable. The QRS is usually the same size and shape, although it's wide, bizarre, and greater than 0.12 seconds. For the rhythm, the P to P interval is not measurable, but the R to R interval is usually regular. The rate is between 101 and 250. And if you see this rhythm, um, you know, you can have a, a normal rhythm like a, a sinus tachycardia. And then if you see three PVCs in a row uh, with a sudden onset, that could be a run of ventricular tachycardia if it terminates. However, if it doesn't terminate, then it is just ventricular tachycardia. If you check a pulse and you have no pulse, then you have pulseless ventricular tachycardia. So the duration is usually greater than 30 seconds seconds and this is life-threatening and um, you know ventricular tachycardia can uh, progress to a lethal dysrhythmia which is what we have here a pulseless ventricular tachycardia so treatment for this for this rhythm is uh, you initiate CPR for two minutes 30 and 2 with BVM ventilations and high flow oxygen until an advanced airway is in place Every two minutes you'll do a pulse check, rhythm check, alternating compressors, attach the monitor with defibrillation pads. At every pulse check, if there's no change in rhythm, we're going to defibr defibrillate 200 joules, and then we're going to increase subsequent doses to 300 and 360, um, or whatever your manufacturer's recommendation is for your monitor, and continue CPR. We're going to obtain IVIO access, we're going to initiate a fluid bolus. After the second shock, we're going to start administering epinephrine, one milligram of one to 10,000 every three to five minutes. We're going to consider advanced airway and uh, waveform capnography. Then after the third shock, we can do amiodarone, 300 milligrams, followed by 150 milligrams five minutes later. We're going to continue this cycle of CPR, defibrillation, med administration while monitoring for changes. And then we're going to treat reversible causes as, as they arise or as we find them. Uh, we have hypoxia, hypovolemia, acidosis, hydrogen ion acidosis, hyper or hypokalemia, hypothermia, toxins, tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, uh, thrombosis both cardiac and pulmonary next we have ventricular fibrillation ventricular fibrillation is this chaotic um, quivering of the ventricles um, so there is uh, no measurable pulse um, or no measurable rate on the monitor uh, the site of origin is many different ven ventricular sites. You know, you have the ventricles firing from all these different places, which is not mechanically giving it enough strength to create um, a pulse. It's not pushing enough blood out of the ventricles to create a pulse. There are no P waves. There's no P to R interval. There's no QRS present, only this chaotic wavy line. Um, there is no P to P interval, no R to R interval, and the rate is not measurable. Um, the patient does not have a pulse, and this is a lethal dysrhythmia. So for ventricular fibrillation, uh, there are different wave amplitudes, and you can have a coarse or a greater wave amplitude or a very fine wave amplitude that, that could almost look, look like an asystole. So treatment for this uh, dysrhythmia is the same as for 
pulseless ventricular tachycardia, will initiate CPR for two minutes, do 30 and two with the BVM ventilations and high flow oxygen. Every two minutes, a pulse and rhythm check. Uh, we'll attach the monitor with the defibrillation pads. And at every pulse check, if there's no change, we're gonna defibrillate, making sure we um, escalate our dosage each time according to our manufacturer's recommendations. We'll obtain IVIO access, we'll initiate fluids. Um, after our second shot, we'll do our epi, uh, one milligram of one to 10,000 every three to five minutes, consider an advanced airway. After the third shock, we'll do our amiodarone, 300 milligrams, followed by 150 milligrams five minutes later. And then we'll continue this cycle of CPR, defibrillation, and med administration, monitoring for changes with the patient, and we'll go ahead and treat our reversible causes. Next, we have pulseless electrical activity, or PEA. So PEA can look like any rhythm. However, the patient just doesn't have a pulse. So what's going on here is, is the electrical system in the heart seems to be functioning properly, but the mechanical aspect of the heart, the, the actual pumping of the blood, the heart is not squeezing properly. So it looks like on the monitor that we have can have any normal rhythm here, but the heart is not moving blood throughout the body. So all the measurements that we would look at for a rhythm um, can mimic any other rhythm so if say it's a sinus tachycardia that we have on the monitor but the patient is pulseless it would be a PEA um, the site of origin can mimic any rhythm with a pulse um, P wave P to R interval QRS the P to P interval the R to R interval all mimic whatever the underlying rhythm is like I've said the only difference is with this the patient does not have a pulse and this is a lethal dysrhythmia so treatment for PEA right this is uh, different than a shockable rhythm PEA is not a shockable rhythm so we'll initiate CPR for two minutes 30 and 2 with BVM ventilations high flow oxygen until we get that advanced airway every two minutes we'll do a pulse and rhythm check switching compressors get our monitor and defibrillation pads on uh, after each rhythm check if no change we're gonna continue and resume CPR um, we're gonna obtain IVIO access initiate a fluid bolus and we will administer epinephrine one milligram of one to ten thousand every three to five minutes uh, consider and place an advanced airway with waveform capnography and then we'll continue this cycle of cpr med administration cpr med administration and we'll monitor for changes uh, throughout this process we want to identify and treat our reversible causes as well number four here we have asystole which is a lack of electrical activity in the heart muscle. So it's pretty much, uh, you know, flat line. Um, there, there is no electrical activity, so there, there is, there is no waves um, on the EKG. Um, so the site of origin, uh, there is no site of origin. There's no electrical activity. Uh, there's no P wave, no P to R interval, no QRS. Um, only a straight or a slightly wavy line. Um, no P2P -P interval, no R to R interval, and uh, the atrial and ventricular heart rates are both zero, and this is obviously a lethal dysrhythmia. So treatment for this is gonna be the same as treatment for PEA. <clears throat> We're gonna do our CPR, um, BVM ventilations, high flow oxygen, every two minutes of pulse and rhythm check get that monitor applied after each rhythm check if there's no change we'll resume cpr get ivio access we're going to initiate fluids and then we'll do our epi uh one milligram of one to ten thousand every three to five minutes um you can consider advanced airway waveform capnography we'll continue this uh this cycle of cpr men administration and we will treat our reversible causes finally we have pulseless polymorphic ventricular tachycardia or torsades de points so for this rhythm um, the patient does not have a pulse again uh, the site of origin is unclear um, if it's uh, one or more ventricular sites so the reason that you have that kind of bigger and smaller waveform is because the 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 or the origin of the electrical activity is kind of 
changing between various sites in the in the ventricles there's no p wave no p to r interval the qrs um, can usually be the same size and shape it, it can vary in size going from low to high back to low amplitude uh, no p to p interval uh the r to r is usually regular can be regular can be irregular this is a very chaotic rhythm the rate is usually greater than 150 um it, it occurs with a sudden onset frequently uh, seen in rhythms with prolonged qt intervals the duration varies uh, this is life-threatening and it is a lethal dysrhythmia so when it says it can progress to a lethal dysrhythmia is because we can see just like with ventricular tachycardia we can see torsades with a pulse and when a patient has a rhythm like this with a pulse it is very dangerous that it can progress to this rhythm which is a pulseless variation so treatment for this is going to be the same as we're going to treat any shockable rhythm uh, one is heat cpr 30 and 2 with bvm ventilations high flow oxygen every two minutes pulse and rhythm check we'll attach the monitor every pulse check if no change we're going to defibrillate starting at 200 joules and working up um, or according to the manufacturer's recommendations we'll obtain ivo io access initiate a fluid bolus after our second shock We'll do epi one milligram, one to 10,000 every three to five minutes. We'll get our advanced airway in place with capnography. After the third shock, we can do amiodarone, 300 milligrams, followed by 150 milligrams five minutes later. We will continue this cycle of CPR, defibrillation, med administration, monitor for changes with the patient. We're gonna treat our reversible causes. So with this dysrhythmia, right, like we said, you, you usually see this after a, uh, a prolonged uh, QT uh, interval there. So um, it's usually because of an electrolyte imbalance. So we can consider expert consultation and, uh, you know, request an order for mag sulfate, two grams IV over one to two minutes. So those were the cardiac arrest rhythms. Um, if you need more help, uh, preparing for your paramedic psychomotor exam, go ahead and visit medictestsecrets.com. We have some great resources there to help you dominate your NREMT paramedic psychomotor exam.